Excellence, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and good evening. I am Sang Jun Park, works for Kiosk, and I am responsible for our research of seabed mineral resources at the Kiosk. Today, I'm going to update you briefly on the crust distributions on the area. The exploration area, the red box area, is located in east of the northern Marian Islands. The right panel shows the area under the exploration in detail. Black broken line box area is situated nearby the Russian tenements. You can see here also the selected seamounts after we did exploration. Our selection was mainly based on the coverage of a crust based on the backscatter intensity and visual images rather than thickness. Thus, we need to obtain thickness data in a coming exploration to fulfill linkage process to finalize contract area of 1,000 square kilometers. We did select 150 blocks from nine subsea mounts most of the blocks are located along the rim of the seamount. Most of the seamounts in the study area shows a depth ranges from 1,500 meters at the summit to 6,000 meters at the base of the slope. Based on the size of summit areas, I mean it is roughly uh, this thing is by a uh, slope less than 5 degree. We can characterize the 13 seamounts into the type 1 and type 2 seamounts. The type 1 seamounts display a flat summit occupying a large portion of the uh, mapped areas, which is over 500 scale kilometers. Some seamounts with the uh, triangular shaped geo appears to be a largest flat seamount in the study areas. Some seamounts have relatively um, flat summits with the, uh, many small cone-shaped volcanoes, which is less than 50 meters in diameter. On the other hand, type 2 seamounts are characterized by conical shapes and narrow flat top surface areas, which is less than 500 square kilometers. Type 2 seamounts are generally small, smaller than the type 1 seamounts. Next slide is about slope gradients of seamounts. We visualize the slope gradients from the observed basimetry. Slope gradients of the seamount summits ranges between 2.5 degree and 7.5 degree, whereas the seamount flanks show steep slopes of 10 degree to over 20 degree. There is a distinct uh, break, uh, break of the slopes at the uh, 1,600 meters depth, which marks the flat summit margin of the type 1 seamounts. The seabed nearby the seamounts is relatively uh, flat with the slopes of less than uh, 5 degrees. What we see in the next slide is seabed scatter intensity. The backscatter data provide additional information on seabed floor, morphologies, and substrates because this intensity can be correlated with the seabed roughness and hardness. Backscatter intensity values of the seamounts ranges between a minus 50 and minus 10 decibel. A type 1 seamounts span a broad range of scatter intensity than the type 2 seamounts. Type 1 seamounts show a bimodal distribution of backscatter intensity values with two modal fig located between a minus 45 and the minus 15 decibel. When we think about the most surface area of type 1 seamounts are the plat summit having a low backscatter value minus 45 
to a minus 35 decibel. Such bimodal distribution can be useful to classify summit and slope regions in the backscatter intensity data. However, type 2 CMOMs show a typical single peak histogram of the backscatter intensity values located between a minus 35 and the minus 10 decibel, which cannot be used for a further classification. We did get seafloor video images through the deep sea camera. We tested the seafloor scanning acquired at the summit of the area and upper flanks of the target areas to verify whether the observed variation of acoustic backscatter data were correlated with the actual seabed conditions. First, we classified the seafloor in the areas into five types. You can see the, you know, the image. The crust were identified on the flanks of type one seamounts and along the edge of the uh, summit areas, which might know just the observed acoustic backscatter intensities. Hot metrics with the uh, mixed habitats of volcanic outcrops and magnetic crust are situated in the homogeneous soft sediments that contains ripple mark in the transitional areas between the outer rims and the center on the summit of the seamounts. The results demonstrate that the occurrence manganese crust is limited to a few rocky outcrops and rocky walls in the soft sediment dominant areas. However, uh, crust covered bedrock with sediment is predominant in the center and the edge of the type 2 Simon summits. As type seabed, you can see also these seabed images on the slide. The types S type seabed is characterized by real populations at the OSM 16 and 18 seamounts. Mixed seafloor types such like a C1 and C2 in the pictures are a predominant substrate at the OSM 17 and 19 seamounts. Consolidated sediments with the polymetallic nodules are also observed at the boundary between the two different seafloor types characterized by the at these at the sum seamounts such like OSM 17. And finally, we try to combine all of data and or integrated all data to sufficiently interpret these areas. The seabed observation and echo sound data shows a positive correlation between a backscatter intensity, steep seabed slopes, and occurrence of the uh, magnetic crust. However, this correlation is, in, is not enough to illustrate boundaries between uh, several seabed types occurring over uh, small areas. The box and whisker plots in the upper left part illustrated the differences between, I mean, differences in the relative acoustic backscatter intensity, intensity for the survey seamounts. A comparison of the echo sound backscatter intensities and the seabed types of type 1 seamounts uh, show that the uh, S-type seabed dominates the zone with the uh, echo sound backscatter intensity values below minus 30 uh, decibels, whereas C2 or C3 types bed C beds are dominant, showing backscatter intensity values above minus 30 decibel. In the upper right panels, you can see some different colors. The red and yellow colors uh, stand for uh, some the cross, magnetic cross zone. However, the blue and the deep blue and sky blue just uh, 
indicated you know the non-crust zone these colors came from the you know combination of data which we collected before and the criteria is uh, listed in the uh, the table in the below the our research suggested the ship based the multi beam backscatter data may be a valuable tool for constraining a special distributions of the amenius crust deposit during the early stage of the mineral exploration or the more the detailed explorations We combined acoustic backscatter data, multi beam basmetic data, and the sea flow observation data over a large area to map the spatial distribution of the Mingus crust occurrence along the seamount summits and the upper plank using the parameters presented in the areas in the study. This result suggests that the classification map may, be, may provide the useful spatial information to a precisely estimated distribution of the magnetic crust on the area. Here is a summary. One of the cues ways to assess the uh, spatial distribution of the magnetic crust was the combination of the multi-beam echosound data and the seabed observation through deep sea camera or the ROV. This method results in a positive correlation between high backscatter intensity, a steep seabed slopes, and occurrence of the magnetic crust. In regional explorations, comparison between the multi beam echo sound backscatters and video image is a valuable tool for assessing the potential of the magnetic crust deposit. The periphery of the uh, summit area of the seamounts is the potential areas for I mean, its crust, but um, sediments could be uh, partly uh, covered owing to fluctuation in the oceanographic conditions. The result indicated that we have to more focus on the uh, area around the outer rim of the summit uh, seamount to identify potential sites that could be impacted by exploitations of the mineral resources and consequently that would require enhanced management measures or precautions. Thank you for your attention.